Let's talk about the shoe go. These are uh, some training shoe go that I utilize. Uh, the hangs the back of the tricep and rolls it over immediately. Blocks. I just have more tools for me. Same thing while holding onto his wrist. Block. Come in. Move to the outside. Close his distance. Strike. Step under. The bush can come through the bicep. Step under. Ninja. Hey guys, Sensei George here. Today we're going over to Gakuredu, one of the ninja arts within the Bujinkan system. So, to this specifically, we're going to be using the Shuko in a technique called Migi Kata Ude, which is the art of getting someone to let go of you in an instance where they may have grabbed you and you're wearing your Shuko. So, first, here's the traditional version. Yep. So in that traditional version, what's happening is that he happens to go to grab my wrist and I have shoe gone and he didn't see it. From here, I shift my wrist upward, I hook into his, causing pain, and these will go through his wrist and cause the pull to happen. Yeah. So he then tries to pull his arm to escape out of it since it's in and it's hooked back. If he goes to lift his arm up, I'm gonna turn in and just pull it back towards me. So he can't necessarily pull his wrist out. So he's in pain and naturally tries to pull and escape the pain. As he goes to do that, we do three steps Two, three. And on the third step, I lift up, kick him in the groin. Pull. Step through, lifting his arm up, turning back, shoving the shuko into his triceps, locking down on both, stepping on his foot, and then pulling him down to the ground, and then raking the face with the shuko, leaping over, cartwheeling, and escaping out of the area. Okay? So, that is the traditional version. And another cool part about this is that the technique works both ways in which he can pull me or I can latch in and pull him three times and on the third kick him in the groin and step in. Yeah. So that's a really cool part about this that it can go and flow both ways. Now real quick, let's talk about the shuko. These are uh, some training shuko that I utilize. Uh, the hand claws meant to cut and rip into the opponent's arms and muscles and rip them out and allow you to be able to do techniques. So. The cool part about this is which you'll know that they come out almost parallel to the ground and curve. This allows you to go in and hook and pull. However, if you look at most marketing versions of the Shuko, they come out and they bend at a very sharp angle. While those can cut, you have to reflect your wrist at very awkward and unnatural angles. They're not the real uh, Shuko. If you go and look at uh, the museum that uh, Hatsumi has available, the Shuko come out at this angle and allow you to actually climb trees crawl over ice of frozen lakes and drag your full body weight so you're not over one point and they let you do, be able to do all the taijutsu and everything accompanied with it. The modern shuko are not effective, they have design flaws, they don't work properly. It's as simple as that. Okay. So now that you understand the weapon a little bit more, let's go into the details or should I say the biomechanics of what's happening. So from this initial grab of when he gets my wrist, when I latch in, this is going to hook in. It's going to go through his wrist and actually start ripping and cutting things immediately. Out of pain, he's gonna naturally try to pull his arm away. When he does that, I hook into it. The three steps are just for repetition. It doesn't actually have to do with, I have to wait until he goes back three times or anything like that. He goes to pull back once, and I leap in and I kick him in the groin. This hunches him over with two levels of pain. I take his mind off of his arm a little with the groin shot, and then I step under his arm while still hooked in into the wrist. And then this one then high fives into the back of the tricep and rolls it over immediately. From here, honestly, the technique can be ended. I can rake the tricep, filleting it in multiple directions, or while holding this, free this hand and high five to the back of the skull. Yeah? Or into the, the spine right underneath the neck and do the same damage and pull out and run. So the technique can end here and I trap the foot to prevent him from escaping. Because if I didn't trap the foot and um, he was able to move around, I have a little bit more things to worry about. He's still gonna be fighting for his life. He can try to kick me in the leg, etc. But by planning this, I remove a lot of uh, avenues of escape. I can strike while his arm is planted. I can rake it and then I can take him down and then rake his face like I showed in the first example. Okay? So this is a very cool aspect behind the technique. So now, one thing to also be mindful of is that you can flip your shuko off and on, which is uh, very useful because say if I only had one hand that had the shuko on, I can still like come up and manipulate him. If I had to take someone as a captive, I can cause some damage and go through and try not to pull and just manipulate them to say I have to take you where I have to take you. If you don't listen, you're going to die, which is a little bit of a shinobi tactic of if you don't listen, you're going to cause your own death. I'm not actually going to do anything, 
But if you pull yourself away from me, yeah. you're going to kill yourself. If I hold you here and tell you to comply, and then you don't, and you try to pull, you do harm to yourself. If you do comply, I can pull it out and it'll work on from there. I can even choose, if uh, I'm a highly skilled enough warrior, I can use this to try and control him immediately. If he tries to fight it or if he realizes that this is here, it's like, if you don't listen, you can uh, start giving demands or work things appropriately from this posture here. Yeah. So there's that. Okay, so here's the deal. The uh, initial grab doesn't really make that much sense. If my opponent sees that I have Shuko on and my hand's presented out below, he's not going to grab them. Okay, it doesn't make sense. Simple as that. However, it is a good learning tool. It says that if my opponent grabs my wrist while I have Shuko on, so go ahead and grab, that now I can know that I can turn into my opponent's wrist and get him off of me. Or to latch on and use this for the continuation of a technique. So to make this make more sense, I have Shuko, he doesn't. I'm the aggressor in this situation because it's a ninja technique. I may be doing a mission which involves me getting through this person to get to some secret documents or anything of that sort. So from this posture here, uh, we're, we're squared up. He's worried about my Shuko. He doesn't want to reach in. Because the moment he tries to reach in for me, he's getting clawed. Simple as that. So I, I have the advantage because I have a weapon and he doesn't. Anytime I touch him, he can die. It's as simple as that. Now, if I come in to strike at him, what he might try to do is block, okay? And if he blocks, I can just slide into him, grab him with the Shuko, and rake again. So just showing that one more time is that no matter, like, that situation, if I come in and he blocks, I just have more tools for me, or should I say targets, for me to claw up. So what makes a little bit more sense is that if I'm using this sharp weapon, and he happens to catch it, the wrist to try to stop it, okay? Now, while I do have a second Shuko, I'm getting ready to apply this technique with one in case something may have happened to this one. It may have gotten damage, or I'm just flowing into a different technique, or I'm prepared for multiple opponents, or I'm taking a hostage. If I high-five him in the skull, I could end the fight right there. But in this situation here, what I'm going to do is roll my wrist up, lift up, kick to the groin just like before, step under, and end up in the situation where I need to be. Yeah? So all I'm saying is that now that you know the traditional way, try to think about a more practical application of the hand grab being if I'm coming in and he happens to catch or if he rolls over and stuff, then we start going into uh, the same side grabs which come on later in the Ruha. But in this situation, it's cross grab and I'm learning how to come up underneath of it and continue. Yeah? So that's just one uh, way that you can apply it there. So now, because Shugo aren't so available in the streets and legal for people to use, let's see how to do the technique without them. So now, let's bring it to the streets. So, we don't have Shuko, now we gotta be able to adapt. We have our hands. Let's make our opponent catch them, okay? So, we're gonna go into a street situation. Our opponent is gonna come at us with a combo. The combo is going to be a round kick where you check it, and immediately you're gonna throw a cross towards his face. He moves to the outside, and in his posture, he closes the distance. You're gonna circle under, throw a knee, get some distance, okay? From here, I'm gonna apply a thumb strike underneath of his uh, tricep, step underneath, same thing while holding onto his wrist with a very similar grip. This brings you into a very similar technique. It's still Uragyaku, but just from a different side. It's also known as Urataki Uri. It's a little bit of a crossover blend between the two. So from here, instead of pulling him down, I step on the foot and then I'm going to drive down, slamming him into the ground. From here, it can be very nasty, okay? I have his head pinned and he can't go anywhere. I can rake his eye or rip his ear and then run, same thing. Very similar to Shuko. But we're trying not to also, you know, progress the fight. If I can get him down and like strike him and go to the point where he can't fight me or his arm pops out of the socket, I won. Okay. So now just uh, amp that up a little so you guys can see the correct speed of the technique and the timing. Okay. So it's going to be a combo of he throws that uh, round kick, I block, I come in, move to the outside, close his distance, strike, step under. The Boshkin comes into the bicep as you step under, which raises it up so you can have that clearance, turn, lock, you can kick or you can pin and bring him down. Yeah. So one more time, a little bit uh, regular speed. And that's the end of the technique. Very effective. Now I do want to show you one variation of the takedown though. Okay. So as that attack comes in, and you block, check, and he comes in for it. And I throw that knee to get some distance. Coming on the a little bit closer on this side. Uh, when I go underneath with this strike. The thumb goes directly into the bicep and raises it. There's no, it's right between the gap of muscle. So it's very hard for him to defend it. So when I come under and I step, I'm creating a pathway for me to go under. But look at this wrist hole. I grab the outside of his wrist into the, the pad of his hand 
and then as I step underneath, it naturally turns it to where I need it to be. Okay, so grab the outside of the wrist from this posture, I slid down, we're on top of his wrist to hold it. I didn't just let go and grab the wrist. We were locked up, I need him, I slid to the position, and I struck to the inside of his uh, muscle with the thumb, came around, locked the wrist from here, thumb over top of the elbow, and then uh, four fingers around the other side, and then I lift this up and have that down, pin the foot to take him down that way, but now I'm gonna show you guys an additional takedown. The additional takedown is that I start to pull him backwards while keeping this leg straight, which causes him to sit. Now that he's sit, I'm going to come in forward over him. He doesn't have any room to move. And then because of that, and the arm is pinned, I press down in with my right arm, lift this up, and that breaks the arm uh, right at the elbow. Okay? Discard, escape. So that's how you can bring this kata where you don't have shuko to the streets. One other way that you can do it is with shakokin, which is using your uh, claws or your fingers like shuko. So if he were to come in and we got to that, uh, we'll skip to the kamuch, the seizing strike. So we're here and now I want to do the same thing. I can grab to the back of the neck and claw down while lifting up and still clawing forward. All I want to do is like grab everything with koshi and like rip and twist as I come through. And even here, let's switch hands just for the heck of it and then go into using koshi again to roll it over. It's all the same technique of where I'm just wrenching and applying everything. Like if I just had Shuko on, got to this posture, he's looking up to me, he's trying to recognize my face, and I say, how can you recognize my face with what eyes? Claw it, cart roll over, and vanish. So you guys are watching Kata to the Streets with What Would Ninjas Do and Sensei George. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know some other Kata or techniques that you guys want to check out. I'm up for the challenge. Thank you for watching. Domenico, gozaimashita.